1996. The year of major socioeconomic turmoil, amazing hip hop and R&B music, royal celebrity affairs and divorces. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. It was also the year that I was born. Unlike famous programmers who knew how to hack remote BI servers once they got out of the womb, I did not start coding until much later. The year was 2012. I realized that I had to go to college. My parents would subject my siblings and I to liberal propaganda, which I would eventually come to know as CNN. I would have preferred to watch hallmarks of modern day cinema, such as Keeping Up with the Kardashians. But in between watching Don Lennon and Anderson Cooper, I saw an ad where very rich people were telling me how I could become rich from learning how to code. And because I wanted to become the next Monopoly woman because representation matters, I decided to investigate what this coding thing was. My Blackberry at that time was just not sufficient, so I took my mother's iPad and Googled the online coding courses, and I stumbled across the Introduction to Python course on MIT OpenCourseWare. I felt the power of 15 hot games, three nuclear war machines, and the grip of a toddler just learning that they have hands when I wrote the sentence, Hello world. Is that a sentence? I'm not sure. It was at that moment I realized that I wanted to become a software engineer and nothing was going to stop me. Fall 2013, I took my first computer science class and during that class, we learned about Java. I remember nothing from that class. My grades for that first semester were nearly perfect because big brain, big hair, big brain, you know, big head. But the following semester, my grades would not be the same because I was unfortunately not aware of the fact that winter was racist. Apart from my computer science class, I took an intro to chemistry, intro to Mandarin, the writing course, and Calc 1. Fall 2014, I started taking classes at the University of Notre Dame. I took the Intro to Engineering System. This is basically where you learn how to program with MATLAB. You end up programming a Lego robot. I also took Foundations of Higher Math. Lastly, I took a class in Linear Algebra and Differential Equations. I ended up missing the spring semester of that year because my tuition was not paid on time. When I came back, I spoke to my advisors and they recommended that I only focus on getting my St. Mary's College degree. However, I wanted that University of Notre Dame degree. Let's be honest, look, I am an African woman. I navigate the world very differently from a lot of people. I don't only have to do with racism, I also have to do with misogyny. I have a passport that never allows me to travel anywhere. Whatever tools I can add to my arsenal, such as a University of Notre Dame degree, because we know Notre Dame has a lot of prestige, I was going to get that tool. And I told my advisor, you know what, do whatever you need to do in planning my schedule so that I can graduate and be on track to get those two degrees. I took an insane amount of credits, worked an insane amount of hours. I worked at the school's dining hall. I was a Sedex Ho for some time, not Ho, like Sedexo. I worked with Sedexo. I worked at the school's theater shop where you end up making the scenes for the plays that were happening. I was a help desk receptionist. I used to braid hair. I used to tutor. Whatever I could do, I was going to do. Fall of 2016, I took a fundamentals of computing class. I also took a probability and logic design class. Logic design has to do with this thing. I really still do not understand that class. I did not do very well in that class. I also took a basic Unix class where I learned everything about grepping and zipping and unzipping. And I was taught by none other but Professor Bui. P. Bui, that's what we used to call him. He's an exemplary professor. You know, you can critique academia all you want, but we need more professors like Professor Bui. Those are the professors who are passionate about teaching people. And if this video is my narrative art, all the professors that I've met along the way are my Gandalfs, and we need more Gandalfs in academia. It was at this time I realized I had a year left in college and I still hadn't had an internship. So what did I do? Remember when I said I worked earlier as a help desk consultant? I reached out to the director of IT at that time and was like, I want to build an app for our college. Let me explain. We had this bus on campus called Blinky. And Blinky was a bus that helped pick girls at different points across the St. Mary's campus at night. However, the problem with Blinky was you never knew where he was. Whenever you want Blinky, you'd have to call security and security would have to call Blinky. So I wanted to build an app that will automatically update the location of Blinky. And the head of IT told me, student government every year gives us a list of demands and we never fulfill them. Could you do one of those demands? So my first engineering internship was building out our Munch Money or Meal Plan app for our college. Also that semester, I took a data structures class, statistics, differential equations two, and a couple of more gen ed classes. Now, this is when Nigeria went into its second recession. 
I had one more semester left to graduate and the country was in a difficult situation. So imagine working so hard, giving yourself digestive issues, working yourself to the bone just to get to the point where you're literally this close to graduating and your country goes into a recession. My advisor started reaching out to whoever she could reach out to about my situation. I personally reached out to the president of my college and explained my situation to her. I told her, look, I am one of the few women in tech on this campus and I will enter a career field where I have a lot of upward trajectory. Please, can I just graduate? It was two weeks into the semester and there was literally nothing I could do and I kind of lost hope and was just preparing to go back home. But then the president of my college reached out to me and she says that she has read up on my situation and they were going to temporarily remove the hold on my account so that I could register and I could graduate. It was also during this semester that I won my first hackathon and I ended up leaving with around $500 and that prize was what I used to open my first savings account. Remember when I talked earlier about applying to internships? Well, the recruiter I met her reached out to me and I just didn't respond because I didn't know if I would be allowed to stay in the country. The recruiter reached out again and this time I went through the application process and I got my internship at Mega. So within the span of a month, I went from somebody who wasn't sure if they were going to graduate to somebody who was on track to graduate, who had a job offer at Meta that would not only give them free housing, but also 8,000 a month. For my final semester, I did a class in the speak math. I also wrote my senior thesis on machine learning algorithms. I also took a programming paradigms class where you learned everything about scripting, particularly in Python. And I took an operating systems class and then I ended up graduating in spring semester of 2017. In fact, on the day of my graduation, I did not stay till the end because I had to get on my plane to go to California for my internship at Meta. The internship did not go very well. If I were to describe my internship experience, I would simply describe it as overwhelming. The code database was overwhelming. The campus was overwhelming. The food choices were overwhelming. Because I knew I wasn't getting a return offer, I felt like I had let down every woman in tech, every black person in tech, every hot girl in tech. I just felt like, such a big failure. And I knew I could go back to college and get that Notre Dame degree. However, I still had a hold from St. Mary's because I still hadn't paid my tuition off at that time. So I reached out to any rich alumna I could find in the Notre Dame area in California to, and explained that's my situation to them because I knew Notre Dame alum love other Notre Dame alum. And I was like, one of them has to find my story significant enough to just give me a loan to pay it off and then I could go back to school but that didn't work. Even though I did meet some of them and I did reach out to some of them, I just did not get the response I wanted. Well, when I blew up, you know, when I blew up, I ended up working at a smaller tech company in Columbus, Ohio for six months. From my experience working in the Bay Area, I knew that I really wanted to grow my career. I had to be in the Bay. This was pre-COVID where everything was just centralized in the Bay. That was where you needed to be at. So I kept on applying to companies in the Bay Area. In fact, I remember my interview with Square, now I'm blocked. Why do these companies keep on changing their fucking name? And I remember getting to the last round in the Atlanta office and doing so well, but then the recruiter called me and I thought they were going to give me an offer, but they told me they just wanted somebody with far more experience. I'm like, why did you even interview me in the first place? So when I had interviewed with Reddit and the recruiter wanted to call me, I literally emailed her back and I was like, you don't need to call me to reject me. I've just become so tired of being rejected. And she emailed me back and said, oh, we don't plan on rejecting you. And that's how I got my offer. So this was year five of coding and I ended up spending almost three years at Reddit. During this time, I worked on the infrastructure team, but I basically was part of the team that helped roll out the Kubernetes infrastructure at Reddit. During this time, my phone fell through the company elevator. So they had to stop the elevator to get my phone from the bottom. Whole another story for another day. During this time, I got to meet and work with some amazing people who I still keep in touch to till today. And I grew a lot as an engineer because this was my first full-time job and I had the support necessary for me to grow in my career. Reddit applied for my H-1B twice, but I didn't get it. The H-1B is the visa you need to work for a company in America as a non-citizen. And so I had to move to our European office in Ireland. And by year three, I knew it was time for me to leave Reddit. So I left and I worked at a startup. And during my six months at the startup, I helped launch their foundational AWS infrastructure. But after moving to a new country, in the middle of lockdown, not seeing my family for like eight years, having a million gastrointestinal issues, I just knew it was time for me to go home. And being in my room, being in the place where I discovered what coding was, being in the same space where I decided I was going to take my life for the next 10 plus years, 
it gave me the time and the perspective needed to figure out what I was going to do in my next 10 years. And that's why I decided I was going to launch a digital studio, tell the stories of emerging technology into the world of bits and bytes. It was from then I realized I wanted to start making stuff. That's why I started making YouTube videos. Even though they weren't great, I was really just happy to put them out into the world. And I'm looking forward to what the next 10 years of my adventure will be like. This is going to be me really starting my career again because I knew the best of me is just not an ops engineer. It's somebody who builds and brings things into fruition, things that were uniquely from my imagination and brings them into the world. And I can't wait to learn actual coding, like not just AWS. You know when you're an infrastructure engineer, you're in the trenches of tech. I can't wait to build stuff that people use and interact with daily. And I'm looking forward to taking you all on that adventure with me. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and I will see you all next time. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about why People in tech are miserable and how tech recruiting has turned into a hot scam.